Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Mentes. Suicide is a, a national problem, almost a national epidemic, and certain groups are hit more than others. Veterans, there's teen suicides, which just clench at your heart, but police officers and first responders are also high on the list and don't seem to get as much attention. Cherie Castellano, program director of Cops to Cop and Rutgers National Call Center for peer support, is here to talk about that and how police officers can get some help. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. What is Cop to Cop? Cop to Cop is a peer support line. It actually is created to help officers who are stressed out and need to relate to someone who understands them. And what we found 20 years ago when the line was legislated, the first time in, in the United States of America, that retired officers could really offer something back to those active officers in the community in terms of support. And so if it was live and accessible and you could dial a number and you could talk to someone in a moment of stress or exposure to trauma or critical incident, any kind of behavioral health care issue, that that officer would understand you because he or she has that same lived experience and can sort of help walk you through improving your quality of life or getting to the resources that you need. You may have heard recently New York City had an, an epidemic. They had six suicides in just a short amount of time. And there were, there were uh, crisis counselors at the time that were saying once one suicide happens, especially among police officers or, a, or among an enclosed group, more suicides will happen. So I would imagine stopping that first one is the most important thing. Yeah, I think what we understand is that also officers really getting supported upstream, you know, before they get to that point of suicide, to really get them to engage and help despite that stigma or kind of macho need to be strong all the time as the rescuers that they are. Someone needs to rescue them sometimes. And some of the literature does say that officers see more human suffering in the first two years on the job than civilians do in their whole lifetime. So just being flesh and blood, no matter how well you're trained, these officers are exposed to trauma and horrors and difficulties that the, the general public really doesn't understand, and it takes a toll. It's like PTSD for veterans, except it's continual. It, yes. it, it doesn't stop. It yes. keeps going and going and going. Right, it does. It's a 25-year career. And, you know, in addition, there are things that we understand from the literature about shift work. And, you know, many of us, my husband is in law enforcement, don't get to celebrate the holidays because our public servant husbands and, and wives are out there se serving someone else. And I think the community really supporting officers is something that can help them. And that's been challenging lately also. So I think there are a lot of variables that contribute to their stress and we really just want to help them get the help that they need and and understand that there are normal reactions to things they're exposed to and they deserve support you know someone that they're serving us we need to right. serve them the state's taking some recognition of this right yes. and they're going to expand it yeah, so Cop to Cop, as I mentioned, was the first legislated law in the country 20 years ago. We just celebrated our 20-year anniversary. And after serving over 80,000 officers over 80, the... 000. I mean, 80,000 contacts, I should say. I'm yeah, sorry, not that's, officers. That's, that's but 80,000 phone calls, um, we were able to identify what the challenges were of officers. But I think what we understood is that a lot of them are resilient. You know, you hear about the officers who are, you know, potentially suicidal or having crisis. But a lot of the officers in our community are models of strength. And so our attorney general really understands that in New Jersey now. And he's created a directive to build on the strong officers, the resilient officers throughout the state of New Jersey and train them in a model of resiliency, sort of peer counseling. And those officers will be embedded throughout our state wow. and be able to hand off to us, the retired guys and the clinicians at Cop to Cop, to be able to have a continuum of support for them. And I love that you've expanded this, not just the state's talking about expanding, but you've expanded it to other to caregivers to, uh, to to elderly care to um, uh, to veterans there, yeah. there's many of these peer-to-peer -peer groups that you've expanded to yeah so Rutgers University behavioral health care has been devoted to developing this kind of service for people who are first responders and serve others and maybe need an alternative to traditional services you know people like vets and like firefighters and it really all started after 9-11 when cop to cop was newly in existence and we saw everyone responding to 9-11 and our governor made us part of the disaster mental health plan at the time. And we found out that firefighters, EMS workers, teachers, you know, veterans were all involved in rescuing everyone else at 9-11 and needed support that was going to be something they could relate to and be confidential and, and professional. And, and here is the, the, the brilliance of it, because 
Many times people don't want to go to a health professional. Yes. There's a stigma to that. Yes. They don't want to feel like they have a problem that maybe nobody else has and that there's something wrong with them. Yes. And yet if they get to talk to someone else who has, goes through the same things and has the same problems and says you're not alone and they can keep it confidential for as long as they like, you're going to reach a lot more people. I'm sure that's what you've found. Absolutely. We found in some of the research over these 20 years that we end up speaking to someone after that first call. We assign them a peer counselor. They say yes 80% of the time to ongoing support. And now we're calling them and talking to them about how to manage their lives. And half the time they will go to professional treatment if it's indicated. Or sometimes they don't need that. They need a spiritual resource. They need some help with their marriage. They need some help with their child. They just need help to get through the day. And I think that us being able to be available you know, immediately with that cultural kind of connection has made it really work for all these specialty populations that deserve it. So you have now, uh, you, you said you're legislated, you have some help from the Attorney General, you're affiliated with Rutgers, so financially everything's okay and you have enough people working on these lines? Yeah, we or, do, oh, we do. do. Like there are many of them are funded by the Department of you know, Mental Health and Addiction Services and, and so the state has really committed to this behavioral health model, which is getting national attention, by the way. I mean, the Bureau of Justice created a task force, and I just served on it. And they're looking at these kinds of models that are cost-effective and engaging people early on in talking about their experiences and getting help sooner rather than later. Your focus seems to be on cop to cop, and yes. I know that's the first one, yes. and so that's the baby. But yes. you've got these other, how are they doing? The, the caregiver to caregiver and the veteran to veteran, I would think, yes. are equally as important. Absolutely. So our New Jersey Vet to Vet program, which is funded by the Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, got national attention 10 years ago. And so we now have a national program called Vets for Warriors that's serving military service members and their families throughout the United States of America. Care to caregivers and mom to mom are really emerging, where although they're funded just for New Jersey and we're sort of smaller than the vet and the cop programs. They are burgeoning in terms of the demand. So we're looking at public private partnerships and opportunities to get funding because we get calls from 30 to 40 other states for these services. But we have to say, no, this is just for New Jersey, um, which is tough to do when you know there's a need out there. I know what's happening right now. There's people out there going, OK, that's great. I got all the information. How do I get a hold of them? Yes. How, what's the phone number? Yeah, so for cop to cop, it's 866 266 272267. And again, there's a myriad of other um, telephone numbers that perhaps I could get the brochure or get the information to be able to be accessible. To Is them. there one website where you can get? Uh, um, yeah, phone? Rutgers University Behavioral Health Care has a website that has all access to those telephone numbers. Yes, Wonderful. Sir. Thank you so much. Oh, I it's such an honor to be in. here. It Thank was, you. It was great to have you. Terrific. Cherie Castellano, Program Director of Cop to Cop and Rutgers National Call Center for Peer Support. So to come on Jersey Matters, you're thinking about leaving the state because of the inheritance tax? We have some important information for you next.